Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is B and this is B versus the system. And today we are doing a stem tube tag. So this is going to be a super low key, no editing um, video that we're gonna do just so you all can get to learn more about me and why I decided to do uh, just basically a STEM channel and why I decided to pursue STEM. And for those who are not familiar with the term, STEM stands for science, technology, engineering, and math. So if you're into that type of thing, you're in the right place. And uh, yeah, let's get started. My goal for this, because I did make this up myself, I was looking at uh, just different niches that are on YouTube and saw that everybody had a tag, but I didn't really see one for STEM. So decided to make one myself. So I have, how many questions did I do? I did 10 questions. Um, I have not actually rehearsed any of these. I probably should have done that before I hit record, but we're gonna just kind of go with it. So uh, yeah, and if you have any more questions for me, just make sure to add them in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer them. So let's get started. What inspired you to start a STEM Focus YouTube channel? Basically, one night I was looking for videos on how to create a home lab because uh, Back in the day, I used to work in cytogenetics, which is a uh, study in biology where you focus on chromosome abnormalities. And with that, I worked in a biology lab. And of course, I could not replicate that lab in my home, but I wanted to see what other types of biology labs people were creating uh, in their home. And with that, uh, I was able to find a few videos, but they were all like almost like a decade old. Um, and a lot of the people, like they had really cool labs, but it was just like a decade old. So um, I was like, wow, I know that people are out here, but for some reason with search, I was having a heart issue finding other uh, science related channels. So I decided to start my own. So which STEM field do you primarily focus on and why uh, career wise biology and uh, technology? So uh, as I mentioned, my past life, I worked in cytogenetics, but nowadays I work in tech. So I've built uh, my own products and am a startup tech founder. I also work in product management, um, have done a little bit of engineering as well. So that's more of my vein. Uh, but for the sake of this channel, I'm kind of covering a few different topics. I'll probably stick more with, of course, what I know, which is science and technology, though I have been really into uh, just more mechanical engineering or wanting to get more into that. And then I think with everything that we do, math is a part of it. Um, yeah, so science and technology. So the ST and STEM. And were you into STEM as a child? If not, tell us how your STEM journey started. Uh, when I was younger, I was into, what was I into? I was into a lot of things. I, I feel like I was really good um, at STEM and I feel like, sorry, I'm like, so that I should have rehearsed this actually. So yeah, let me back up. When I was younger, I had a lot of special interest. A few things that I was interested in were, uh, animals. I really, uh, found birds very interesting, still do, especially waterfowl. Um, also bees I've always found interesting. Um, and I ended up later studying bees in a uh, university. And also um, outside of STEM, I was really into just reading and writing. So I would say I was more like on a hobby level into reading and writing. Like even when I was younger, my parents bought me, um, <laughs> this is gonna like date me a little bit, but back in the day, like there would be uh, salespeople that would come by and like try to sell your family like encyclopedias or um, just like these volumes of books that had uh, different subjects on them and my parents ended up buying them and I was super into it. So I liked the reading aspect of it, but I also did like what I was learning in the books. So I feel like I was very holistic when it came to like, like the STEM related things like science technology, as well as uh, reading and writing. Um, I thought I was going to be an author when I was growing up, but then my mom always tells me that I was going to be a doctor. So I think with that, I kind of dabbled into both to where I was actually um, really good at math. I ended up 
doing um, this program with Duke University. They had like a Duke TIP program where I was able to take like the SAT at a very young age and like they saw how I did with that. Um, I also uh, had the opportunity to go to a like specific like math and science school, did not do that, will probably be my biggest regret that I did not do that. But um, so I guess to sum up this question, I was good at math and science and was into it, but I was also very much so into reading and writing. I used to carry a journal around with me everywhere um, with just uh, some of my writings in it. I used to journal every day. Um, I loved R.L. Stein, uh, like Goosebumps books. I loved uh, young adult fiction and things like that. So yeah, I think I like both. All right, so who are your biggest influences in the STEM community, both online and offline? Okay, <laughs> anybody who knows me, actually, wait, wait. <laughs> anybody who knows me knows who my biggest influence in person that I love and secretly think is like my uncle in a past life. It is this man, <laughs> Neil deGrasse Tyson. And I actually got this um, poster because I had a chance to come visit him whenever he came to my town recently. And it was just like a big goal checked off. I've loved Neil deGrasse Tyson for how long now? Like decades at this point. I remember seeing him on PBS and just being so intrigued by um, both him and his lessons. He's hilarious. Um, if you've had a chance to uh, just get to know him from any of his content online. I know for a while he was notorious on Twitter for things. He also has like a meme. So like you may know of him, but if you've actually heard him speak or had uh, the pleasure of going to one of his lectures or seeing him at the planetarium, you know that he's just a super brilliant person. Um, online, there are a few more in like the technology space that I like. Actually, I would say technology, engineering, and science. So science-wise, um, there is this woman that I follow on Instagram called Kelly the Scientist, a black woman who is, I believe black, yeah, black woman <laughs> who's also into uh, science. And I just really like watching, um, I believe it's forensics that Kelly is into. So I just remember seeing, I was like, oh, Kelly the Scientist, she kind of looks like me, gonna follow her. Uh, another one uh, that I am very uh, just, I actually like have the pleasure of being somewhat acquainted and friends with this person um, is the founder of Lumia, Madison Maxi, a brilliant person. I believe I've talked about uh, her on this channel before. Uh, founder of Lumia, which is an e-textiles company that focuses on like robust circuitry and like flexible circuits so that you can create wearables, um, super brilliant person. Um, and then on more of like the technology side of things, there is a awesome YouTuber, uh, Veronica Explains. And um, I found them because they are really good at explaining things, obviously, <laughs> but also like a big Linux fan. Um, so just uh, if you are also a Linux fan, you probably already know who Veronica Explains is. Um, and then, there's someone recently that I've been following. Uh, it's just, their name is Kari, K-A-R-I. And they've been doing um, programming with retro games. So um, like back in the day, you would have like um, just these books that would teach you how to code uh, these different retro games. So they've been doing that um, and just using like computer programming as if it were the eighties. I just think that that concept's like super cool. So I had a chance to, uh, come across that. I think while I was watching Veronica Explains, I think it was like something that popped up and uh, I've been following their channel ever since. Alrighty. And like I mentioned, I'm not editing this. So you're seeing this in real time. So like if I stop, like it's because I'm kind of excited, but also like need a break. Okay. So how do you come up with ideas for your videos? Honestly, they kind of pop up in my head. I think because, um, I have had the pleasure of both working in biology and technology and also do a lot of mentoring uh, with different startups that are in this space. Uh, sometimes I'll just be working and I'm like, wow, that'll be a really cool video. <laughs> also, um, sometimes I'll see things on social media. Um, though, I mean, if you look at my channel at this point, I've not done much, though some of the videos that are coming up 
um, you'll see that I've taken inspiration just from things that I've seen online, a few hot topics uh, that are in the STEM related space, or really just highlighting other people. That's like my ultimate goal is just to get people uh, more into STEM related hobbies, but also showing them that uh, there are so many people that are into STEM uh, that you may not know about, so that hopefully that will spark some interest as well. All righty. So, how, oh wait, this is the one I just answered. Okay, next one. <laughs> Uh, what challenges have you faced as a STEM YouTuber and how did you overcome them? Honestly, I feel like I have only had challenges with like being the YouTuber part of things, not necessarily the fact that I'm a STEM YouTuber. I think with YouTube, um, it's creating videos and I'm not someone who's like really on social media. So creating videos is not natural for me, like sitting down in front of a camera talking and like, I'm not even looking at like the right place, <laughs> but like, it's just not native for me to do this. Um, not really like talking to anybody. So I think with that, it's more of like, okay, you have to like, I don't know, put yourself together and be on camera and uh, just know what comes after that. I think that is the challenging part, but I am super happy that I did it. And I'm also super open to feedback. So Everybody so far has been uh, just really kind to me in this community, so have not really uh, seen any challenges that way. Though I will say one thing with being a STEM tuber or a STEM YouTuber is like I don't have many analytics from other channels to go off of unless I want to do some of the super like um, what is it like the super like almost like Mr. Beast style things to where it's like watch me convert this non-edible thing into something edible in my science lab. It's just like, it would be cool, but it's not really the audience that I'm going after to where I'm going to have to keep doing all these crazy experiments. Um, I want to find more of like, I don't know, like cozy gamer style STEM, if that makes sense. Like I want this to be like a chill part of the internet where we also talk about science and technology. And then maybe a little bit of lifestyle in there as well. Um, I think that's more of my vibe as opposed to the super, um, I don't know, just go viral type of content. And with that, um, it's been really hard to find other channels that are like this. So if you happen to know of any, please leave them down in the comments. If you are one of uh, these YouTubers and you come across this channel, please let me know uh, that you exist so that I can follow you. And yeah, we can maybe collab or something. All right, what tools and equipment do you use for creating your videos? I don't use much. This is actually my MacBook, um, my MacBook that I'm using right now. So I don't have an official camera, though it has been enhanced because I'm using uh, StreamYard. And StreamYard is what I do also for my um, parallel play. If you've been able to see some of my live streams that I've done, uh, I pay for stream, uh, StreamYard. That way I'm able to use their, um, I guess, higher up camera. I think it's like 1080p, something like that. And then I just have a ring light. I mean, I have these lights here, but those are always on. And then I have a little bit of natural light, as you see. So I think just doing the natural light works for me now. Uh, I purposely am doing this. I'm not even like editing these, as you see. And I've decided that at least for like my first like until I get monetized, I'm probably not going to buy any equipment just so that I can like get into the habit of making videos. I think that's going to really help me um, just stay consistent and then also save money <laughs> and like just show it's like, all right, once I hit this milestone, then I will do more investing. Um, unless something happens to where it's like I get some cool opportunity to where it's like, all right, let's get it together. It's time. Uh, but other, other than that, we're going to just keep it simple with StreamYard and a ring light and natural light. All right, so we only have three more questions left. How do you stay current with the latest developments and trends in your field? Honestly, so it used to be, um, I would follow different journals, um, like each, each study or field of science typically has like a, at least one like popular journal um, that scientists and like different like PIs contribute to. 
Um, so I would either follow journals, but those are typically like paid for. And I'm not really paying for much right now. <laughs> um, I do sometimes go on Google Scholar and Google Scholar, it's just like a search engine for specifically um, just uh, research papers. So you're able to find um, instead of just like your typical like chat where you were to look up something on Google and you would maybe find things that were like from Wikipedia or I don't know, other news sources that haven't been vetted. You can go on Google Scholar for specific subjects and find research papers. So sometimes I'll do that. Um, I also think that I've curated my algorithm on specific social media where I'm kind of just um, presented <laughs> with some cool information that I can always go back and cross-reference. Um, and then YouTube, of course, I will, if I'm interested in uh, learning anything, I think my YouTube algorithm is really good at just kind of taking me down that rabbit hole of like learning things as well as just discovering new things as well. Um, other than that, I like for technology, I'll use like Product Hunt just to see some of the new, um, some of the new products that people are launching. I'm also thankfully a part of just large groups of entrepreneurs from my experience at like Techstars and other um, accelerators. So I kind of get that through my email. Uh, but yeah, I think if you're interested, I would definitely just figure out which field of study you're into and see what some of the top companies or organizations are in that field and then sign up for their newsletters or see if they have a YouTube channel or something that you can follow along with. Alrighty. What advice would you give to someone interested in starting their own STEM YouTube channel? My advice would be, please start. <laughs> There's not many of us that I've been able to find, so please start. Um, just hit record, honestly. That's my only advice right now. I would love to see more people in STEM um, on YouTube. And I think that there is a desire out there for something slightly different. I think also people are looking for hobbies. So if you decide to do STEM as a hobby, I think uh, you could just really just get started and find your audience uh, probably very soon. I've been lucky to start finding mine. I've been growing quicker than I expected. So super excited about that. Uh, but yeah, get started. Um, also, don't feel like you have to tackle everything. Um, I know STEM is technically science, technology, engineering, and math. Um, just do the one that you know the best. <laughs> and if you're wanting to learn more, of course, go into that, but also don't feel like you have to be the smartest person um, in the world in order to talk about a subject. Just make sure that you're talking about things that you know and things that interest you. And my last question is, what's next for your channel? Uh, any upcoming projects or goals are, that I'm excited about? Um, so if you watched one of my previous videos, uh, you saw that I mapped out everything that I am planning to put in my biology lab that I'm creating, um, kind of like a biology slash chemistry lab. So if you saw that, that is one thing that I'm really excited about and still plan on doing. So from that will come a few different videos of me doing uh, just different experiments. So that's the main thing. Other than that, um, I'm just excited to get consistent again. Um, <laughs> Some of you may have noticed that I've been gone maybe for like a month and a half, maybe, yeah, maybe about a month and a half. And the reason was I just didn't plan well. <laughs> like I had some travel that was coming up both for work and uh, just for, for friends. And it was like, oh, wow, like I actually have a YouTube channel. I should probably post something and just never got around to it. But now with that, um, I have come up with more of a schedule and also have some videos that I'm excited to record. So I'm going to be doing that. And yeah, that is pretty much the STEM tube tag or the STEM tuber tag. So if you are interested, actually, you know what? We're going to call this the STEM tube tag. Um, this will be the official video. If anybody wants to join in, I would love for you to uh, just actually, I'm going to type it in here <laughs> for. Uh, if you could just type in uh, whenever you're doing your tag, just like the STEM tube tag, that way uh, we'll be able to find you and see uh, what you're doing. And 
yeah, I don't know. I'm looking forward to hopefully coming across more STEM tubers from this. So definitely use that tag. Also, if you are a fan of uh, STEM related content, make sure that you uh, hit that subscribe button and also like this video. It really helps me with finding the audience that I'm trying to find. I know that it's like super niche right now, which is also why I wanted to do a tag just to get more people uh, to see this video as well as to contribute to the tag. But yes, as always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.